Welcome to the lecture um, on section 11.4 related rates. So this is one of my favorite sections in Calculus 1 because I think it allows us to see how the notation um, actually applies or to maybe understand some of the context behind the notation. So let's look at first the concept of related rates and determine what this is. So let's look at an example. If we pump air into a spherical balloon, notice that not only is the volume of air increasing in the balloon, but the radius of the balloon is also increasing. And so we know that their rates of change are related to each other. Um, we can just see this intuitively that as the balloon fills with air, as the volume increases, the sphere gets larger, which means the radius is increases. Um, but we also have a formula that relates volume to the radius as well. Notice that in general, it's much easier, it, well, in this example, excuse me, in specific, it's easier to measure directly the rate of increase of the volume. We could put some kind of um, metrics or measurement on the amount of air that's going into the balloon. Um, perhaps easier than it is to measure the increase of the radius. We'd have to do some kind of measurements around the balloon um, for the circumference because we can't really see inside the balloon. So in related, rela in related rates problems, the idea is, is to compute the rate of change of one quantity in terms of the rate of change of another quantity. Um, and usually the second quantity that we're changing it into is more easily measured. And so that's part of the motivation here. To do this, we need to find an equation, an equation that relates both quantities. And then we'll just simply differentiate both sides. And um, using the chain rule with respect to time, this just means that uh, remember that we use the chain rule concept um, to do implicit differentiation when we don't have an explicit equation. All right, so let's look at this problem in detail. Air is being pumped into a spherical balloon so that its volume increases at a rate of 100 cubic centimeters per second. How fast is the radius of the balloon increasing when the diameter is 50 centimeters? Okay. <clears throat> it's a good idea to identify what's given and what's unknown. And I want you to use notation that's calculus notation. So if something is changing, if something is a rate of change, then use your um, derivative notation, either f prime or um, dy dx, etc. Use that notation because that will help you in solving these problems. So in this case, we're trying to figure out how fast the radius of the balloon is changing. Um, and we also have some information about the volume. So let's again use related letters, V equals volume and R equals radius. And now we want to know what do we know, what data is given to us, and what are we seeking. So let's look back at the problem. Look for the numbers and what are they. This problem, we have two numbers. We have that the volume increases at a rate of 100 centimeter cubic centimeters per second. What would that equal to? It's pertaining to the volume, and notice it's a change increasing at a rate over time. So this is actually dv dt, or the derivative of the volume, the rate of change of the volume with respect to time. Notice what we're looking for is how fast the radius of the balloon is increasing when the diameter. So we're looking for how fast the radius is increasing, which is dr dt. And it tells us that the diameter is 50. Now, um, here we have two variables, volume and r. And then we have a, something else that says the diameter is 50. Hopefully you recognize that a diameter is just two radiuses, or twice the radius, so we can convert this into a radius measurement so that it works within our problem. So the first thing we're going to do after we look at all the notation, um, what's given in the problem and what we're looking for, is then to try to find a formula 
that relates those two variables. How is the volume and radius related of a sphere? And this is actually a geometrical equation. The volume of a sphere equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. So this is actually a kind of a given formula. I will not expect you to know things like this on a test, um, geometric formulas, etc. Okay. Once we have a formula that relates those two um, variables, we're going to take the derivative of both sides with respect to time. Okay. So notice that there is no time variable on the right. So what we have here is the, either the chain rule or an implicit differentiation. We know that the radius is changing over time because the volume is changing over time. Um, and so what we're going to do is differentiate the right side of the equation with respect to time. But in order to do that, we have to differentiate first with respect to r and then add that r prime or dr dt, which is what we're actually looking for. So we're going to plug in the values that we looked up here. We said dv dt equals 100. It's a direct correlation. 4 pi r squared. This is our um, the derivative of this, right? We take um, the exponent down. It's 3 plus, um, excuse me, take the derivative with respect to r. And we get um, 3 times 4 thirds, which just gives us 4. Sorry about the clock there. Um, pi is also a constant and then r to the power of 2 times this other piece, which is r prime, etc., that we use for implicit differentiation. Okay. We can also plug in our value of r. Since we know the diameter is 50, we can plug in r, which is equal to 25. We could also just solve this equation, which just looks like what I did here. Um, the op how I solve for dr dt is just dividing both sides by 4 pi r squared and then substituting in the 25 for r. If the diameter is 50, then the radius is, is 25. Okay, And so we get a rate of change of the radius with respect to time is 0 0.0127 centimeters per second. Now, one of the things you want to always be mindful of is the derivative is positive if it's if the change is increasing, if whatever we're measuring is increasing. In this case, we're measuring the radius. If the radius is growing or increasing, this will be positive. If the radius were shrinking or getting smaller, it would be negative. And that's the same for any rate of change or any derivative. And it's very intuitive. Your speed is increasing it's if you're accelerating. Your speed is decreasing, the rate of change is um, your speed is decreasing or uh, if the rate of change is negative or you're decelerating or braking. All right, let's look at another problem. Tree height and trunk radius. Suppose that for a certain type of tree, the height of the tree in feet is related to the radius of its trunk in inches by h equals 15 r raised to the power of 2 thirds. Suppose that the rate of change of r is 3 quarters inch per year how fast is the height of how find how fast the height is changing when the radius is eight inches? So the first thing we're going to do is figure out what we have. We already have two variables. We have height and radius. They're already given to us in the formula that's relating those two concepts. So a good part of this problem is done. So now let's look back at the other numbers in here and figure out what they are. The rate of change of R is three fourths inches per year. So again, this isn't r equals 3 fourths, it's the rate of change of r. So this is dr dt. Again, it's change per time. Or, so dr dt equals 3 fourths, and we're looking for how fast the height is changing when the radius is 8 inches. So here we're looking for um, dh dt. Okay? And we also know here that r equals 8. Okay? why I didn't put those values in there first. So we take the derivative of both sides of h equals um, 15r to the 2 thirds with respect to t. So we get dh dt, which is actually what we're looking for, equals 10r. Again, we pull the exponent down in front. 2 thirds times 15 is 10. R to the 2 thirds minus 1 is negative 1 third. And then, of course, because it's implicit, we add dr dt. All right, 
If we use the values from the problem where r equals 8, dr dt equals 3 fourths, and plug these in, then we can solve for r to the negative 1 third power. Plugging in all of those values, I don't know why we didn't plug in the, um, oh, we're looking for that, my bad. So 10, r is 8, negative 1 third, um, times dr dt, which is 3 fourths, we actually just have a straightforward calculation and we get three and three quarter feet for a year. It's very important on tests, et cetera, that you know what units we're dealing with, and especially when it's a rate of change, it's a unit, it's a it's a ratio. Let's try a little more what seems like a complicated problem. Often it helps to draw what's happening in the problem. Um, when you read this problem, and I'm gonna read it to you in just a second. It gets a little confusing, but if I slowly draw the pieces, it's not so bad. A ladder 10 feet long rests against a vertical wall. If the bottom of the ladder slides away from the wall at a rate of 1 feet per second, how fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall when the bottom of the ladder is 6 feet from the wall? That's a lot of data, and if I just read that without drawing anything, I'm easily overwhelmed by how much stuff is in there. So let's start drawing it. Notice I simply have a ladder leaning against the wall. And here I have a brown wall, a yellow ground, and a blue ladder. Now I can label some of the parts. The first thing I know is that the ladder is 10 feet long. That's never going to change. Sliding, it's also sliding away from the wall, dx dt. Now I'm using, because this looks kind of like a grid, I'm going to use the flat line here, the horizontal line is x. The up and down line, or uh, height of the ladder, is y, and then that's going to be my hypotenuse. So I know the ladder is 10. I also know it's sliding away from the wall at a rate of 1 feet per second. Notice again that as the ladder slides away from the wall, the distance from the wall at the, at the base is getting larger, so this is a positive rate of change, which is congruent to what I just said. How fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall? So how fast is the ladder going down the wall? Notice this height is, is decreasing. So one of the things that I know in doing this problem is I should get a rate of change which is negative. If my answer isn't negative, then I immediately know I've done something wrong because this height is, uh, is shrinking, it's going smaller. And we want to know that when the bottom of the ladder is six feet away from the wall. So this distance here is six. Oh, here we go. Now I'm labeling the diagram with different elements. Come on, where's the rest of this? So we're trying to figure out what dy dt is. And where did the 6 go? Did I not have it up there? I guess I didn't put it on there. This distance here is x equals 6. So notice that I have a right triangle. I know this side, or I do for a specific value. It's when x equals 6. And so I can easily find the height at that very moment. Okay. This also relates what we're looking for, the x and the y here. So x squared plus y squared equals 10 squared. So once I have this formula, I differentiate with, with um, respect to time. Again, this is 2x dx dt, 2y dy dt, and the derivative of a constant is always 0. So that's why it's 0 on the other side. Now I'm going to plug in the values that I know. Um, x is equal to 6, that was given in the problem. Um, dx dt is 1, that was given in the problem. y, we don't know what y is. y isn't telling us when the ladder is 6 feet from the wall, how, how high is the ladder on the wall. But remember, this is a Pythagorean theorem problem. x squared plus y squared equals 10 squared. So when x is 6, we can calculate what y is by using the Pythagorean theorem again, and we get y equals 8. And then we're trying, to, uh, then we multiply that by the y prime or dy dt, which is part of the implicit differentiation, and it's also what we're looking for. So now we have all this numerical values. We can simply plug in the or do the arithmetic now and calculate. And when we solve for dy dt, we get oops, sorry negative 12 sixteenths or negative three-fourths foot per second, feet per second. Okay, so some quick guidelines for how to do this. The first thing is drawings definitely help. If possible, make a drawing. 
if you have a drawing, even if you don't have a drawing, at least label the variables. Find and label diagrams with what's given and what's unknown. Again, remember, look for numerical values and also use notation related to calculus. If something's a rate of change, either use dy dt or y prime so that you're already thinking in terms of pu putting those into formulas where you have a derivative. Write an equation. You've got to figure out how the, um, the variables are related. Writing an equation that relates the two variables is vital because once we have that equation, then we're going to differentiate each side with, the, with respect to time. If it's an um, implicit equation, then we have to use the chain rule. And then we plug in it, the, our given values, um, do any derivative calculations, and then we solve for the unknown, which is usually a rate of change. So that's the end of this lecture for 11.4 related rates. Uh, please make sure you practice enough of the problems both in your homework and then in the suggested problems at the back of the book um, that are listed in your syllabus along the schedule. Thank you.